Captain's log start at 201509.09. Welcome back everybody, Captain Foley here today. And first thing I want to show you guys, I got more Canadian Star Trek money. This came, this is a 25 cent piece. It's got the Starship Enterprise on it. And on the back it's got the Queen. But inside we've got oh, right there. some stamps. We got the Captain Kirk stamp, and then the D7 and the Enterprise stamp, and just a little write-up about all that stuff. So that came. That's pretty cool. That's thirty-five dollars, thirty-four something from the from the Canadian Mint, Mint.ca. If you're interested, um, I ordered one. Um, for my friend Dan Hall, who lives in the States, in New York. It's on his way to him now. That and the $20 piece that I showed you guys last Captain's Log. So, lots of interesting things um, have been going on. I've been writing a lot of scripts. Got a lot of cool scripts written, written a lot of cool things for you guys to experience in the future. I'm, I was excited to write them. Some really interesting ones coming up. And um, so those are done. I can't wait to film those with Samuel. And yesterday, I had a chance to go over to my friend Blappy's place and start working on the comm badges. I thought I'd get them done yesterday, ran out of time. It took me all day, um, and what I'm gonna do is I took some video while I was there, I'm gonna put that in here for you guys to see. But the comm badges are almost completed, 100%. This is the finished one, one of the finished ones. But uh, all the Indiegogo perk ones and a few extras are made up, and they're at days right now, they're almost ready to be painted. Um, all that all stuff to do is right now they're currently masked. All I have to do is paint the black and then clear coat them and they'll be done and ready to ship off. So I got a bunch of videos of me doing that while I was there, kind of showing you the process and showing you how things work. And Dave, Dave was there being silly because that's my buddy, that's Blap for you. Um, so hope you enjoy those. I'm going to put those in right now so you can see what's going on with those com badges and uh. Hopefully you'll learn something about the process of making them. It's pretty detailed and intricate, and it's, it's fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy that, and uh, yeah, take a look at that right now. Captain's Log Supplemental, coming right up. Captain's Log Supplemental. Hey guys, don't worry, first off, this is not distracted driving. I have a uh, mount for my phone. Um, I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a treat today in the Captain's Log. Um, which sounds really dirty. Is it polished corn or is it, you know, a peanut? No, I'm just kidding. Um, today I'm heading over to my buddy Blappy's house. We're going to, well, I'm going to finish those comm badges uh, for you guys. Anyone that got the comm badge perk for our Indiegogo Mission America campaign, thank you very much, first of all. Um, sorry it's been so long getting these done. I've just been so busy. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the process today, how that's done, so you guys can kind of follow along and see what, what it's like to make a comm badge, which should be kind of cool um, for you guys, hopefully. And a uh, little addition to this Captain's Log, which I think you guys might appreciate. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying the Captain's Log so far, and I hope you enjoy the Captain's Log after this little segment's over, where I answer your questions and comments. And telling people to, uh, that I hope that I, they enjoy my Captain's Log just sounds funny and like a lawsuit pending, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just heading over there and uh, should be fun, Dave's a great guy. Um, his buddy Shane might be there, so there might be some shenanigans that ensue. We'll see how much I can actually get recorded um, for you guys, but I just kind of want to give you guys a little uh, something special this time around. So, and uh, so the combat just should be done today. Um, here's hoping. And, uh, they should be mailed out by the end of next week, but I'll keep you guys posted on that progress uh, on the Trek Yards page and stuff. But don't worry, they're on their way within the next month or so, um, just time permitting. But yes, just, yeah, stay tuned for that. Anyway, I'll see you in just a second with some uh, combat badge construction. And I wouldn't be much use to anyone without my morning coffee and a breakfast sandwich. So of course we go to the awesome Canadian Tim Hortons. So 
Well, I got a sausage and egg breakfast sandwich on a homestyle biscuit, a Canadian maple bake or a Canadian maple donut, sorry, and a large double 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 cupped. Now a double double is just two milk, two sugar for all you Americans. It's just how we order it here. I don't know about you guys, but I know in the states I've ordered that before and they look at me funny. So anyway, off to Dave's. And just in case you're wondering, the reason I get it double cupped is because, well. Instead of getting the sleeve for the coffee cup to keep your hands from burning, A, it keeps your hands from burning, and B, it keeps it warmer or hotter longer. So double cup is the way to go. Just a little captain's prerogative as far as that goes. A little advice for you guys. Don't know if you'll use it or if you even care, but that's just the way it is. All right, guys, so here we are with Blappy. This is my buddy Dave. Uh, we're just in the Blapposphere, his workspace and we're going to be finishing up these badges. So I'm gonna kind of show you each step of the process and he's gonna help us because the reason they took so long is because this guy didn't cast them until like yesterday. Ha! Ha! <laughs> no. Ha! Ha! He had them casted like before the Mission America tour, I think. Yep. Yeah, so it's been my bad. I've been too busy and haven't got around here. So don't blame this guy. Anyway. <laughs> well, here we are guys, it's a bucket of badges. All need to be sanded and whatnot. We're gonna show you the process. Um, I'll introduce you to Dave just right now. So we're starting out. We got a bucket full of badges. See, one of these could be yours that you ordered. Um, but we need to get them nice and pristine, nice edges. So that requires some sanding and some use of a razor to cut off the, what's it called? The flashing? The flash, flashing, yeah. The flash, and we're gonna be no, no flashing here today, but we will be doing some flashing, if you know what I mean. So, also we need to sand the backs. This is flat sanding board. Just sand it like this. And that apply, it gets a rough surface so that we can apply the uh, pin back to this. So, I, I'm gonna be doing that for probably a while now, sanding these and getting the flashing off. So. Yeah, that's step one. Well, step one was him casting them, but that'll be a different video altogether. When we do the next batch, how's that? It's the blapisphere. It's the blapisphere. Gotta be prepared for spontaneous blast singing if you're gonna be in the blapisphere. What happens in the blapisphere ends up on my captain's log. That's so that's been sufficiently scored so that I can apply the pin back but if you'll notice there's some little areas that need to be trimmed just use a regular razor blade So these are being done the exact same way that we did them for our Mission America tour. So these are the ones like Doug Drexler, Rick Sternbach, John Eves, they all have one of these. You can check out the uh, pictures I just posted on my Facebook page. John and Doug are both wearing them in the pictures. Rick got one, but he didn't want to put a hole in his shirt. So. And Dave was the one that did up those ones. He made them look very beautiful. I'm doing these ones for you guys because I love you guys and you know, I'm gonna try to do as good a job as I can. Isn't that right, Dave? Yes, sir. See, that's how you address your captain. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I 
And if you want to see some great model work and get some great kits, go to Blatt Models. What is it? BlattModels.com? Yeah. There you go. Check that out. Or check out Blatt Models on Facebook. That's Blatt, B L A P, Models. Isn't that right, Dave? Yes, sir. <laughs> This is just the start of the day too, man. It's only like 9.30. We got a whole day of this. So this is going to get more interesting as the day goes along, guys. There's another one. It gets added to this bucket. This is a finished bucket. This is the not finished bucket. I'm going to be doing this for a while. For you guys. Yeah. Oh, so we got about 25 done. There's this many left. If you can see that there. These are all the finished ones, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's scuffed up pretty good there. Yeah, yeah, look good. Mm -hmm. He's my quality inspector mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens, guys. This is what happens. It's amazing we get anything done. So guys, I got two more to go after this one, but I'm gonna score this one on the on the bottom here. I'm gonna put a X in it. So you'll be able to know if you got this one in particular. All right guys, it's like five to 11, so it took almost an hour and a half to do all the sanding of these. So the sanding's done now, so it's time to move on to the next step. <laughs> All right, so the next step is to get the pin backs. You can get these at like any craft store, like five bucks for a pack of 10. And uh, it's some accelerator and some super glue. Put a little bit of accelerator on there. Dab of crazy glue, super glue. And there you go. That's at the top, so when it's on, it'll hang properly. You don't have to worry about it leveling, it'll level itself. So there you go. So I'll see your hundred and raise you two hundred more. I got a few left over guys. Here they all are pinned back ready to go. There's 30 here. I think we need 28 for our Indiegogo supporters. Uh, so now it's going to move on to painting. Isn't that right Dave? I'll pay 28 quatlus for the fat man with a toupee. Yes, sure. Hi Shane. Hello. That's Shane everybody. So here's the styrofoam board that Dave's used to paint other com badges in the past. All we do is just stick these in so that we can paint them. And another big piece of styrofoam in case I need it. So 30 pound badges ready to go. It's an extra. So here we are in Black's paint booth. Got them all ready to be painted. Just putting some 
Duplicolor Sandable Primer on them. Uh, so it's primer, then gold paint, then I have to tape them off and mask them for all the black parts. Cut those out, which is going to take a lot of time. And then do the last uh, black, and then clear coat after that. But we're going to do the primer right now, so yeah, here we go. This is just the primer coat, so you don't need to be something like this too crazy with it. If you're putting color over it anyways, that'll cover it, but this is more about paint adhesion and finding flaws than anything else. And these are a prop piece too, so they've got to be more durable than what you do with regular model paints. So this stuff in the big cans is the bomb. So here they are, oh, we got the heater set up here so it'll dry faster. But there's the primer coat. All right, guys, now that the primer coat's done, it's time to do some gold. Try a gold. Check that out. So, let's get a coat of this, and uh, we'll be good to go. So what are we going to do? Let's paint! Let's paint. So they're all painted now. With the first gold coat. Um, this should be the only gold coat that it needs. Um, but yeah, then we got to wait this, wait for this to dry, um, paint or mask them off, and then cut out all the areas that are supposed to be black, which is all the border and the star in the middle. And uh, that's going to take a lot of time to do the masking and the cutting of that. But then they go back on the board and they get painted black, and that will paint er paint everything black except for what's been masked, which is all the gold in the middle. So anyway, that's the next step, guys. <laughs> Okay guys, we got the... Oh, hold on a second. Alright, so the gold coat is done. That's all it needs. Once it dries, it'll look really good. Then we gotta mask them and cut the masking to get where all the black's gonna be, which is gonna be time consuming. So I don't know if we get it done today, but we'll try. It's 12.30 now, started at 9.30, so not doing too bad. So, yeah, anyway. Gold done! Waiting for paint to dry. Waiting for paint to dry a lot. So here's what they look like masked. Just put the tape on. Use a little toothpick here. Push all that in around the the raised ridge and you gotta do that with all of them I've done it with all of them except for one I'm gonna do this one up and um, then take an exacto knife and you basically just cut right on the inside of the, the the raised lip so you can pull that part off and then the only parts that are exposed this is the hardest part you have to cut out the star in the middle and the only parts that are exposed get the black spray paint. And then after that's dried, then we remove the masks to show off the gold in the middle. And then it's just a clear coat to finish them up. So it's very time consuming. It's now one, well, 10 after, it's 10 after two, sorry. Um, so I've been doing this for a while, but I've got them all done. Just starting to, uh, yeah, cut them up, which is fun. Thumbs up. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm all doing this for you guys. You better appreciate it. Or I'm going to come and kick your asses. <laughs> and sometimes you get some problem with the paint. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. So there are duds. There are ones that screw up. So 
Anyway, guys, that's it. I'm going to get these done, and then I will uh, see you guys again when I hit the black on them. I don't know if I'll be doing that today or not, but we'll see you soon. Okay, so as you can see, got a lot done on those, um, but it's very time consuming, especially all the cutting out of that masking, the tape, uh, took forever. Um, a few of them, some of the paint kind of lifted on them, so might have to do, redo a few, but we've done some extras just in case, so we should have all the Indiegogo perk ones covered. If not, we'll just make up some more, so don't worry about that, guys. Um, so yeah, time to get on to your comments and questions from my last captain's log. Uh, Alright, the first, first one is from Kenny S, who says, I would not open them. They are collectible items. And Atari Kid says, that's why you buy two. One to open and the other not to. I think he's referring to the Star Trek beer that I featured in my last episode. Um, I've drank, drank a few of them. I still have two in the fridge and two cases unopened. My brother's each got a case for me as well. So if you haven't checked out the Star Trek beer or the last Captain's Log, go do so. It's pretty cool. Um, Doug Drexler even <laughs> messaged me saying, hey, that's my artwork on the, on the label. And he asked for the website for the beer company and stuff, which uh, is DarrettBrewing.com, I believe. So, yeah, cool. Smedley Do Right. I like your Trek Cave. Why, thank you. This is just part of the Trek Cave. If you watched other Captain's Log, you've probably seen more of the Trek Cave. Uh, there's some in the other room as well. There's some over there. There's more over on this side here that you can't see. So there's always lots of cool stuff to look at when I do a Captain's Log. I try to mix it up and do it in different locations, and I'll probably do that for the next one because uh, I've been here a few times now, so we'll see what happens. Nova 1972X. To honor Anton Yelchin and Walter Koenig, to be sure, I think it would be awesome if a brewery made a Chekhov's Russian Imperial Stout. I think that'd be awesome. Um, made by a little old lady in Leningrad. I think that'd be very cool. So yeah, absolutely. Um, great suggestion. And brewing companies, do that. John Cantor. Uh, the ending of Deep Space Nine is, was ludicrous. Even J.J. Abrams on crack couldn't have come up with something so absurd. <laughs> Um, and then Captain Lokiwa commented, what's wrong with the ending of Deep Space Nine? Uh, well, as I said, the ending of Deep Space Nine, I'm on, I've got two more episodes to watch. I just watched one of my favorite Deep Space Nine episodes, just the third last one in the series, which was the one where Sloan dies, and Bashir and O'Brien have to go into his dying brain, and I think that's a fantastic episode, and a lot of great potential there for, like, storytelling to see the way that a mind dies and have him still be able to interact with people on the outside i think is fantastic but the ending of deep space nine i just as i said before it could have ended like 12 times during that episode it's just like oh we got to the end no we didn't and oh we got to the end this is a real crescendo and then no it's not and just eh. and the whole paul rot paul wraiths and the fire caves and stuff really bothered me so that's i kind of think what they were talking about there so take that for what it is Robert Van Tunen, I really enjoyed your panel at Trek Conderoga. Uh, I really wish I could have attended. I really love the work Kali and crew have done, and it would have been awesome to see you and the Commander live. By the way, your mission briefing for the Archer class really excited me. I wasn't sure about the ship, but it seems like a really cool little ship. Also, the Commander is right. Someone should build it. I agree. It's kind of like the Millennium Falcon of Star Trek. Um, Somebody complained too on that one that we didn't do our research, we didn't know anything about the ship going into it, and I, we had to re reiterate again, that's the point of brief mission briefing. It's like if we're on the ship and we get the, a sensor echo of a ship that's on a very sensor periphery, and me and the commander have to go into the ready room or the conference room and sit down and talk. Well, judging by the way it looks in the sensor reading, it could have this, could have this, could have this, just based on our already established knowledge. So that's what the mission briefings are about. They're not full in-depth episodes about the ships. There will be one coming on the Archer class eventually, absolutely. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for that. D. Tombe, Tombe Amy. It's a good haircut. Well, thank you. It's grown a little bit since then. Mark Plot, second your comment. Like the haircut, Captain Foley. Why, well, thank you, guys. Enterprise H. Would you agree that the new show cannot rely on the Klingons and Romulans to carry it? Would you say the Kinzinti fit in? I read up on the Kazinti and found that the a guy working on Enterprise made an entire language for them. One thing might rectify, one thing to maybe rectify the problem with the NX-01, perhaps, uh, would it perhaps not work better if the ship was originally going to be named the Dauntless? I think it would 
uh, I think it would work with the trend of naming the SS Valiant as well as the NX-01A as seen in Voyager. And he goes on to say, I have the Star Trek Vanguard no novel Harbinger, but on the cover it says that there are diagrams of Vanguard's station inside, yet I cannot find them. Would you happen to know what page I can find them on? I have a history of not getting the extras that were advertised in the products before, so I'm a bit wary. I don't know which page they'd be on. Um, I think I have the same book, but I don't think I've looked for the ins I don't know if they're inserts or if they're on a specific page number, so that I don't know. Uh, I would love to see the Kinzinti, the Lyrans, the Gorn, um, the Interstellar Concordium. Uh, the race was designed by my friend Josh Spencer, who worked on FASA and uh, Starfleet Battles. The Andromedans, I'd love to see any of those in the new series. The Gorn and the um, Kinzinti would probably be the best bet. Maybe even the Tholians. I want to see more of the Tholians. That would be a fantastic to see those. So yeah, and I did not know that they had created a whole language for the... Uh, <clears throat> for the Kinzinti, but that's really cool. I didn't know, th know that. So even, you're teaching me things. That's why I love these comments. That's another be benefit of mission briefings is that we get your comments on the ship and so we can use those when we do the full episodes. Your comments are very important, guys. And yeah, one of the things that, naming the ship wasn't actually just named to be Enterprise, yeah, I can see that. But I think a more believable one, uh, why Picard says there's five ships to bear the name Enterprise was because Archers was an NX-01, it wasn't an NCC-1701. Uh, it wasn't an NCC designation, so maybe that's when they started after the Federation was created, because um, the NX was pre-Federation. Uh, so maybe that's why they say there's only five? And that kind of fits in with the timeline and kind of solves that problem for me, personally, and I think that's a, a great solution. JC Fox, hello Captain Foley. First, I would like to thank you and the Commander Cockings for the great show of Star Trek stuff I love. What would you think about doing a show on the Oberth class in Star Trek Discovery? What would you think about showing, not doing a show, showing the Oberth class in Star Trek Discovery? Uh, TOS styled one, maybe? I'd like to see some different, some TOS versions of different ships that we've seen over the years. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, I think that would work. I know everybody, everybody say the design is after TOS, but if you look at the design with mostly simplistic forms, it could be TOS or even before. It's 10 years before TOS. Uh, they've already announced that Discovery takes place 10 years before TOS. So the Enterprise is out there, but it's the older style Enterprise, um, just around the Cage era. I think it's actually after the Cage, um, but before the original series. So they might have the spikes on the end. Uh, Spock might will, will be on board as first officer, I, or not first officer, science officer, I assume. So we could run into them, who knows. And I think they would show the Kelvin type ships in Discovery and might explain why they are bigger compared to the Constitution class, maybe a colony ship. Yeah, we speculated that the Kelvin was bigger because it was a colony ship, that makes absolute perfect sense. And that keeps it in prime timeline for me. And everybody says they keep wanting to see the Kelvin in this new series. I'm sure they'll, they might do that because of all the, the, the posts that I've seen about it anyway. I could care less if they show it or not. It's not really my favorite ship design. So, yeah, it would be cool to see it, for sure. Avulzel. Would you ever design your own Enterprise ship for the sake of it? Uh, probably never designed my own Enterprise, no. Um, but I have designed other starships and stuff, well, which I've shown off quite a few times. Uh, I just like to doodle and do things like that. So, yeah, I would definitely design my own ship, but not an Enterprise, no. Mike CK. Mick, C-K, M-I-C-H, C-K, I don't know. <laughs> we don't want USS Discovery. There is no ship from pre-TOS era or Abrams verse. If you say so, I mean, even in established canon, there were ships prior to that because of Enterprise. In non-established canon, there were the, the original, I think there are six Daedalus-class ships at first. There's a book, um, called Starfleet Year One. It's a novel and it talks about the scramble to become a captain of one of those ships. It was like a contest, not a contest, but a, there were certain qualifications that were needed to become captains of these new Discovery style ships. Not Discovery as in the show Discovery, but new exploration ships that were going out. And they were the Daedalus class ships, the first starship captains. There was like six of them, I believe. And it, the novel's all about the, the vibe for control of those ships and rising through the ranks to get to your captaincy and stuff. I think it was, a, it was a great novel. I got it somewhere in there. I got a bunch of novels, so. 
Ballroom Scott. I remember forcing my family to stop in Vegas on the way to Disneyland for the Star Trek experience. Standing on that recreation at the TNG Bridge was an amazing experience. I'm sure it would have been. Like I said, I didn't get to experience Star Trek Las Vegas, Star Trek the experience. So, mm, I missed out on that, but it looked like a really cool thing. I wish they wouldn't have got rid of it. Uh, Mark Bossert. It says part two of two, but I haven't seen anything else by him, so I'll just start here, and if we find part one later, that's fine. Although this, look, this comment does get cut off, um, unfortunately. Something else I realized quite some time ago, there are, there are a lot of pretty similar themed episodes throughout the different Trek series and some other sci-fi series as well. For example, Enterprise, Vanishing Point, and TNG, The Next Phase. A transporter accident makes people go invisible and lets them walk through walls. I know how she's imagining things. Or Enterprise, Doug, uh, Doctor's Orders, and Voyager 1. All of the crew except for one are put in stasis in order to pass through a dangerous region of space, and the one person left starts hallucinating. hallucinating. Or Enterprise, Oasis, and Deep Space Nine Shadow Play. A whole community consisting of holograms, especially, except for the one, or two original survivors, or TNG, Frame of Mind, and Deep Space Nine, Far Beyond the Star, Far Beyond the Stars, a main character shifting between reality and other another life, losing their sanity over time, with the last one being present in about every single sci-fi series: Stargate, SG One, Stargate Atlantis, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you run out of ideas for new episodes of Trek Yards, I would dot 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 gets cut off we all know the problem with the ipad with my ipad anyway with the comments on youtube for that for long comments so please re-ask that if you could because i don't know what you mean but yes there are a lot of recurring themes and story ideas because really you got to write for a show that's seven seasons 24 episodes a season something like that um so you're gonna run out of ideas especially after seven or five series and whatever so i mean it's okay to use those reuse those as long as you do it in a fairly original way and I think that's they've kind of done that so I have no problem with that Mark Sorza SG-1 had good plot line episodic ratio after the first season okay I like I said I haven't really got into SG-1 I find it hard to get through and every time I sit down to watch one it's always one I've seen before which makes no sense William May thank you shout out thank you shout out I don't know Ellie Ar Arndt, A-R-N-D-T. I don't know how to say your last name. Arndt? Arndt? The Bajorans were cool for certain plots in their original incarnation, Ensign Row. Oh, I hated Ensign Row with a passion. As an allegory for the troubles on the Belkin region in the 90s. We got to see bits of this with some of the plots, but the Bajoran religion element took over. By the way, it's pronounced e li arndt e li arndt Eli aren't? Eli. Okay, hold on. Eli aren't. Eli aren't. So there you go, Eli aren't. Hopefully I got that right. And I hated Renson Row so much. More than I hated Kira. Which is difficult to do. Anyway, Nova 1972X. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the NX01 was not a Federation ship, but an Earth Starfleet ship. So the Enterprise dedication plaque is still accurate. They said, I think that Captain Foley's argument with the alternate timeline started before the Narada Kelvin incident should be a valid one, considering the Temple Cold War. It is possible that the events of the show Enterprise take place entirely or in part in an alternate timeline, which should explain all those pesky continuity errors that sometimes people have issues with. But I prefer to think of Enterprise as the prime timeline. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But yes. Ross Balmer says, "'Tis the USS Fugly Prize." I don't know what we're talking about there. Richie Appel says, "'The coin should have Jean on the back, "'but not, not the Queen." Well, unfortunately, it's legal tender, and we have to have the Queen on our money because even though we're not a British colony anymore, we're, we're our own country now, but we still have, have the Queen on all of our stuff. So if you put Jean Roddenberry in the back, it wouldn't be legal tender. He also says character motiv 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 mm, character motivations. That beer is affecting you, Captain. You might need to be temporarily temporarily relieved of command. Eh, haven't, had any, haven't even had a beer today. Nobody's get me out of my chair, man. Not even Commander Cockins. And I don't have a doctor on my ship, so the doctor can't even order me out of the chair. 
Ballroom Scott says, I recently rewatched Enterprise myself. It's kind of a weird beast. There are some really good episodes in there, but there are also some really bad ones. I also feel, it also feels to me like CBS was too worried about whether people were watching it or not and kept trying to change things up to get more views. But for me, it only served to make the show feel a little bit bipolar. Yeah, I agree. I think they did a lot of shifting of character motiva motivations and things and uh, adding more action and just to get the ratings that they wanted, which they weren't getting. And I think changing that made a lot of the fans that were there at the beginning veer off. I think that's the whole Zindi War arc that did that for me. Most of season three I didn't watch. I didn't care about the Zindi War. I thought it was remarkably stupid to include a new species when you've got the Gorn, the Kinzinti, the Thalerans, the Tholians, everybody there. Let's learn more about them. Let's have a little war with them, a scramble with them. Why I have to invent this whole new race? That's five races in itself. And it was just stupid. I hated the Zindi story arc with a passion. Samuel loved it, but like I said, I'm going back and rewatching Enterprise now, so I'm going to rewatch that and hopefully maybe actually stay awake for it. Mike Mac Bozard. Disclaimer A, part one of two of my comments. Split to avoid the iPad cutting in half. Okay, here's part one of his comment earlier. But it did cut in half because it was too long. Disclaimer B, just call me Mike. That's about how my name is pronounced, just FYI. Okay, Mike. There you go. Talking about a fixed point in time, Cisco with the sonic screwdriver lying around in the background. You want to tell us something, Dr. Foley? No? There's no sonic screwdriver in the back. I guess I should make it go. I am smart. I will make it go. You will forget all you learned about Dr. Foley. I just said there's no doctor on my ship either. I wonder why. Anywho. On the topic of registry numbers, I found it odd that the second defiant, the ex-USS Sao, Sao Paulo, uh, retain the NX registry. I did too, actually. I just just mentioned that to Sylvia when we were watching the uh, that episode a few nights ago. The Defiant class was way past the, its experimental stage at that point. And as we see with the Excelsior, you can change the NX to NCC on the same ship. Any thoughts on that? I think you're absolutely right. They should have done that. Um, it was kind of a mistake, I think, on their part. But, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Galvers, 5.1%. That's water, not beer. Mark Plot says, "Chew hat at nine percent will put your hair on, put hair on your chest." We got some ninety-proof alcohol upstairs as well. So, Doug Drexler, Stewart, that's my art on your beer caddy. Doug Drexler commented, "Thank you, Doug." Um, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, and I, I mentioned you earlier in the video too, talking about how you messaged me. And anyway. Thank you, Doug, for watching my captain's log. And now I feel embarrassed. I feel like nothing I say is smart enough for these guys to listen to. So, Richard Ol Olova, if you don't mind me asking, where did you get the Enterprise E L cars you have running in the background of your desktop, and the background and the Enterprise shields going up? Is that all one package program? No, as has been answered 50 million times <laughs> in all of these videos. It's just flash animations, screensavers, and videos that I found online. Uh, right now you're looking at a YouTube uh, playlist that I have uh, for Alcar's displays, and it just cycles through them. Uh, this one back here is just a flash animation um, showing the original Constitution Class Enterprise with a TNG era Alcar's. So you can find them anywhere, look online. I've collected them over the years. I don't know where I got half of the screensavers I got, so I'm sorry. Empyrean Frost. I now have the JJ Prize on Star Trek Online, and the design has since grown on me. Almost all of the Star Trek designs have grown on me, save for the Jellyfish, Bonaventure from TOS, and Norway class, and Ferengi ships. Yuck. And others, etc., etc. Anyways, I can't wait to see other Starship designs for, from Discovery, so I can be inspired to build ships on Minecraft. Yeah, I've seen some JJ uh, ships, the JJ Prize, in-game, and they look actually kind of good. Especially with some of the striping and uh, different hull config, like hull markings you can put on them, I think they look great. I'm just gonna go through your list here. The jellyfish, ugh, ugh, it's interesting. It's a great sci-fi ship, but yeah, Bonaventure from TAS. And 
it's all right. It's kind of, yeah. The Norway class, yeah, it's ugly. And the Ferengi ships. If you watched our Decora uh, episode on the uh, Fer Ferengi Marauder, notice the Decora class. Um, I actually said in there it's one of my guilty starship pleasures. I actually kind of like the like the design of the ship. I didn't at first, but it's kind of grown on me over the years, as you say, as most starship designs do. Even the JJ Prize recently has kind of been growing on me. I see it, and I'm less like I'm kind of like eh. Like when I went over to my uh, went over to my parents' place to go swimming. When my brother came, he brought his son with him. So my nephew brought his little JJ Prize, his his big one, uh, the electronic one. And I was actually looking at. It. I was going to recreate a scene from into darkness and have it come out of the water but he freaked out because of the electronics in it i don't know why you know i just wanted to recreate the enterprise coming out of the water scene that's so famous because that would happen but anyway it's kind of growing on me to be honest um there's still those the cells are too close together that's my biggest beef with the thing other than that it's not so bad so even the jj prize is starting to grow on me guys either i'm getting old and senile or i don't know <laughs> it just uh, put me out of my misery. Elvis the Chef says, What a small world. I had no idea that you lived in London, Ontario. I live there as well. Going to have to pick up some of that beer. And if I'm lucky enough to find one, I really enjoy what you guys do. Nice to know you're so local, Captain Foley. Well, Elvis the Chef, if you want to get together for beer and chicken wings, there's a place just down the street from me that has the most amazing chicken wings in the city. And uh, quite a few of... I go with my friends all the time, but I've met uh, Timothy Earl, who's uh, another Trek Yards fan from London, London, Ontario. He came and messaged me and we got together and we've got, hung out a few times now. Um, so yeah, definitely up for meeting people and making new friends. And if you want to meet me, that'd be cool. Just drop me a line, send me a private message on Facebook and we'll arrange something. Matthew Bollinger. I would like to find Axinar. Got any ideas? We'd like to find Axanar. What, the star? This, that's the system? Um, just wait till after January, until the trial's over, and see where that goes. Maybe they'll be making new stuff. If not, there's Prelude to Axanar on YouTube. That's all I can really suggest. James, the bedroom guitarist, says, Hey, Captain, love the show. Great stuff. If I could make a suggestion, though, I thought you were a huge fan of the... I know you are a huge fan of the Alcars, but it takes up a ton of screen space. Without the Alcars, your illustrations would be a lot bigger and easier to read, especially the really cool cutaways. Cheers from Toronto. Well, James, we like to we like that we have the Alcars because it's kind of like an in-universe thing. You could actually be sitting on your bridge of your TOS Enterprise that you have built in your basement, have that on our display, and the Alcars make it look like you're it's something you're looking at on your monitor. Um, it's like an incoming transmission from the Star Trek universe, how like, we like to put it. Um, we're trying a few things now with um, our podcast where we kind of, we disappear for a minute and kind of goes full screen to what we're talking about and then it zooms back out and changes to something else and we pop back up. We're experimenting with some of that stuff, but it won't be for the regular shows. We like the L cars the way they are. The thing we might do uh, soon is start animating the L cars, have a slight little animations in there so it looks more real world in universe kind of thing uh, but we're not going to lose the yellow cards it's one of our trademarks and it's one of the sh things that make trick cards what it is they're not on the captain's logs they're not on some of the other videos um, so it's not a, a across the board branded trek yards thing but for the main shows the saturday releases uh, the mission briefings it's very much what we had originally envisioned and we're going to keep it that way unfortunately so i apologize but um and a lot of those things that you see the cutaways and whatnot aren't high resolution enough even if they were full screen and you freeze framed and zoomed in you wouldn't be able to read it because some of them are just pictures we found on the internet that are very grainy the resolution isn't great so that really wouldn't work so well anyway um so that's kind of where that is so analysis of sci-fi says why do you canadians get star trek beer we americans do not but nice coins thanks i don't know we're just lucky that way I think you guys do get some Star Trek beer. I think I've seen some people from the States posting it. I don't know. You have to check with your local beer store, whatever you have down there. James Oldfield. Thanks for sharing your cool Trek stuff. Don't worry about going fast. I appreciate your time. 
it. I appreciate you take time out of your week to answer these questions and comments. Not sure why people are getting so worked up by Discovery. I just think of it as a sequel to the Enterprise and not a prequel to TOS. Quick question, what unseen bit of Starfleet or Federation would you like most, most like to see in the future? Well, it's interesting you said that you think of it as a sequel to Enterprise and not a prequel to TOS because I want it to be a prequel to TOS, not a sequel to Enterprise. They'll probably try to do both, but I think they're staying more true to the TOS vibe and feel. This is more of a fan, it's for the fans kind of show, so I think they're going to treat it really well and kind of keep the continuity and stuff intact. They will try to bring in Enterprise, I think, because it is established canon, but I think it's going to be more... It's going to be a step in the right direction as far as being before TOS, I think. Um, that's what I'm hoping. And what unseen bit of Starfleet or Federation would you like to see more of in the future? I want to see life on Starbase 1. Uh, you know, the Starbase from uh, the space dock from Star Trek 3. I'd like to see what, what it's like in, to live on there. Um, we talked about that in our episode on it. It would be cool to see kind of a day in the life of You can go shopping. It's like, it's like Deep Space Nine only. All Federation. It might be like a military installation. I think something like that would be kind of cool to see. Um, and just life generally on Earth. Um, just what an, somebody not even associated with Starfleet. Starfleet's just hardly ever mentioned to them. They just live their life. Um, don't have to work. You know, just do things for the betterment of humanity. Do things because you want to do them. I think that'd be cool to see too. So, Ken. Hi, Captain Foley. Love the coin. Did you see the Ferengi Gold Press Latinum coin from the Perth Mint? Got one for my birthday and I love it. Yes, I did. They're fantastically cool. Kind of cooler than these. But uh, yeah, we've got some cool stuff as well. So, JW Pals Rock. Hey, Captain. I'm so jealous of you being able to visit the bridge. It looks epic. I enjoyed talking to you and Samuel at Denver Comic Con. I was the guy that gave you the suggestions for the top 10 episode of Emblems and kept pestering you and Samuel. Quick question aside from the gorgeous rendering Samuel does. How do you guys find all the awesome picks for ships for your episodes? Do you go to a particular set of sites or just Google? Thanks for the awesomeness and live long and prosper. Nerf herd. James Palcrock, where are you here? I have you written down here. Because I've got a list of top 10 stuff. And you are mentioned on there because I don't want to forget your name. But yes, top 10 emblems in Star Trek. Uh, was kind of his suggestion at Denver. And I was going to mention him when we did the episode. And I will still. So thank you, James, for commenting again. Um, but you are written down on my desk. Your name, I see it almost every day. I got a bunch of other stuff here right now. But yes, I'm not, I will not forget your name. Um... The picks we use for episodes, I've been collecting Star Trek pictures for ever since I first got a computer. So I've got th like thousands and thousands of Star Trek pictures and folders. I've gone through and I've kind of ordered them all into different ships, folders, and then if we're looking for something specific, either Samuel will render out a picture. I've been known to Photoshop a picture or two. I've actually done a few good ones for an upcoming episode, uh, which I'm pretty proud of because I couldn't find anything on them, but they're a pretty big part of Star Trek. Um, the topic that we'll be talking about I mean um, so yeah we either make our own or we search Google or look try to look for something specific if we can't find it we will try to make something but generally yes it's either pictures I've already have or find on Google so um, Brian Campbell CA just so you know those coins are face value which means you can use it as legal tender but no one collects coins <laughs> No one who collects coins uses it in circulation. Their value is in their silver or gold and in their rarity. Exactly. So when they do get resold in like 20 years or 50 years, whatever, they might be worth more because of the collectability of them and the fact that they're in mint condition and not wrecked because I'll be keeping them safe and my kids can make a fortune off them maybe. Who knows? For the 100th anniversary of Star Trek. Marvel X42, can you give Meow a link to the website where Meow can find some Star Trek screensavers like Elkars or Ships Flying, etc.? Well, Meow, um, I think uh, I've said it before, there's Elkars.org.uk. There's a lot of flash animations there. And Meow, if you use a screen recording software, uh, you can like get a quick, quick video clip of it and have it on cycling. I don't know. There's lots of different places. There's lots of... Um, 
You can type in Star Trek Meow screensavers and find stuff that way. There's some good ones by Adam uh, Turner. Uh, he does some good stuff. I don't know if you can find them still. A lot of them have been taken down or I haven't looked recently, but I know last time I checked they were hard to find. So best thing to do is to type in Star Trek screensavers and just kind of go on a little bit of a meow hunt and see if you can find something. So that's all I have to say about that. Dustin Chataway. Uh, the one, the was the button, Baton Rouge class, Valley Forge class, Asia class, Daedalus class, use Kelvin class, Ares class, NCC 1650, Korolev class, the Discovery class, NS class, Earth Starfleet, Intrepid class, Earth Starfleet, use Franklin, Earth Starfleet, and many other were all pretty TOS ships. So I just listed a lot of his favorite TOS style ships, I guess. Kirk Solo. Oh, thank God they changed the Discovery. I liked the Discovery the first time I saw it. And I like it even more now. Although there's one change that they made that I wish they wouldn't have, but we'll talk about that once you've seen more of it. Electric Theo Studios. I feel that the Discovery looks too big to fit between Enterprise and TOS era. Judging the amount... Judging the amount, placing, and size of the windows on the first model we saw of the ship. The first model you saw of the ship was done in five days, and those windows were not necessarily to scale or accurate at all. So don't worry about that. Um, as for sizing, it's, it's about the same size as the Connie as far as length goes. Um, it's not that big. So... Uh, Sephiro Space Pirate. Cap, regarding Discovery, will there be any new reveal of what's to come before January, and will there be a video on Discovery remodeling? Probably yes and yes. I can't, I know they'll, they'll be releasing things right up to the day it, it comes out, um, little hints and previews and stuff, so. As for video on, re, like, designing the ship, I'm sure there will be eventually. Um, I'm not sure when or you know, if you have to wait to the first season on DVD or something to get those extras, but I'm sure it'll be something. Marco Sorza. If, as Picard says, there have only been five ships in Enterprise, how does Enterprise XCV330 fit in? Does it mean that TOS, or at least movie era, and TNG are in separate universes? No, I assume that the anything with 1701 is the registry number counted as far as the five ships go. That's why the NX-01 didn't quite cut it. Um, would be my guess. And there's a few comments back and forth about that, but I'm not going to get into those. Dustin Chataway, the the use discovery could be Starfleet main character main carrier of the early 23rd century. It's the use of the discovery. It could very well be a carrier ship. Um, judging by the way the secondary hull is designed and shaped, it could definitely be for fighters or shuttles or evacuation. I don't know. It could be for something like that. Yes. Seawolf 21S Cap. What do you think was the coolest scientific discovery that you wish they'd spent more time on and or come back to? Like real world or in Star Trek? Um, I think the transphasic cloak would be something that'd be cool to develop a little bit better. I'm sure it doesn't break the Treaty of Alderaan uh, with the Romulans saying that we can't develop a cloaking device. It's not technically a cloaking device, it's a transphasic cloak. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you want me to be more specific, if you want to kind of elaborate on that and tell me what you meant. Um, give me some examples maybe for next time, because it's hard for me to just randomly pull, th pull things up. Um, Captain Johansson, where do you get where do you get the Franklin model? What, this little one? The Franklin model? This kit was a drink topper when I went to see the movie Beyond. Uh, had to pay two dollars and thirty cents for the big cup and the uh, topper. Yeah, that the Enterprise, um, the JJ Prize with the banana struts, and um, they also had the the enemy's swarm ship thing. Um, so, but I like the Franklin, so I got that one. And they're going to be including these these exact ones: this, the Enterprise, and the enemy ship in the. A special edition DVD set that has all three of these as well so you can probably pick it up then captain oh just said that one uh, PFC Thomas Blackhawk I hope the new Star Trek has a Native American on it like Voyager did and like the animated series did uh, a shout out to my friend William Bill Shatner 
And last but not least, I kept my ears I kept my ears from when I was an extra on Voyager. It was lots of fun and lots of great food offset. Love glazed donuts, so will. If you wish to give me a shout out, I'm Tom the Vulcan. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper, Tom the Vulcan. I would love to talk to you more about being an extra on Voyager and being friends with William Shatner. Private message me, I'd love to chat. Maybe we can get you on the show talking about what it's like to be on an episode of Voyager. Mark Plot, Synthetic Beer, Synthetic Lieutenant Commanders. I. Captain Lokiwa. Ugh. You lucky patok. Always wanted to get our modded two, either singularly or in an action pack. I envy you. Well, I have a couple copies of it now. If I can find, remember where I put it. Uh, who's the lead designer of Star Trek Discovery? Is it Sid Mead or someone new to Trek? I'm not gonna tell you. If the JJ rumor is true that he wanted his work to replace Star Trek, technically he did not get his wish. When the 2015 October rolled around, all Star Trek model kits were replaced by Star Wars model kits in the stores. I regularly used to go for the Trek models. That's it for the comments, guys. Thank you so much. Um, again, thank you so much for commenting and watching me and taking time out of your day to watch me. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. The com badges, well, hopefully I'll have a chance next week to go see Dave again to do part two of that to finish them up. Hopefully you like Dave's creepiness. He wanted to do something funky and he had this cool, the cool glasses, so... We worked it in. It was funny. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's good to see some of the process that goes behind them. They're very time consuming to make. So I hope you guys appreciate that. Uh, and I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I've been really busy. And now they're kind of 80% finished. Um, I got to go back one day and maybe it only, it'll only take me because now I have to spray paint the black on, remove all the masking for the gold and then spray on the clear coat and fix any mistakes or any paint that peels up if I can. I might have to might have to cast a few more and I might have to repaint them uh, some. I don't know, because um, when I was doing some of the cutting of the masking, some of the, 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 the paint looked like it didn't set properly, almost like it didn't stick to the resin. So it could, it could have been a problem that way. Uh, I was kinda, I'm kind of concerned about that, but it'll be fine. Um, we'll, get, we'll get those to you, don't worry. I just want to take my time with them, make sure they're, they're good enough for you guys. Um, they probably won't be perfect, some of them, but they're going to be as close to perfect as I can get them. Um, but yes, anyway, and just again, just so you can see the finished result, and hopefully these will be available sometime soon for you guys to purchase if you haven't got one through Indiegogo. There you go. That's the Chuck Yards Com badge. See, there's the back with the little pin back thing. So... All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, like I said, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Um, and I, like I said, there's some great content coming, some fantastic scripts written about some cool stuff, not just basically ship-related, but other cool things. And uh, we're trying a new thing with, with um, well, I can't tell you. Damn it. I don't want to spoil the surprise. So just stay tuned. There's some good stuff coming up, and I'm looking forward to sharing all that with you guys. So I think that's it for today. I probably missed something that I wanted to talk about, but that's fine. I will get to it next time on my next Captain's Log. So please comment below, ask your questions, clarify anything that I didn't get right when I answered these ones, and I will um, see you all next time. Until then, this is Captain Foley signing off. Live long and prosper, everybody. Oh, and happy birthday, Star Trek. I'm actually filming this on Thursday, which is Star Trek's 50th anniversary. And, um, yeah, it's being released on Friday the day after. So happy birthday to Star Trek. Um, it's been great. Great run. And I don't know what I would do with my life if it wasn't for Star Trek. As you can see, it's all around me. And by the way, guys, this is not the She-Hulk. This is an Orion Slave Girl. A lot of people have commented and said, nice, She-Hulk. That's not what it is. It's an Orion Slave Girl from one of the comics. So, also, yesterday on Trek Yards, to in honor of the 50th, um, I've got a picture of me and Samuel which okay story here there's still a story so a few more minutes of your time when we were in LA um, on our last night we went to meet up with John Eves because we needed him to sign some um, get, get him to sign a few things that we were getting ready to 
you know, take with us to Denver Comic Con and stuff. And he couldn't make it to Denver Comic Con, so we filmed a little brief video of him saying, Hi, sorry I couldn't make it to Denver Comic Con, which never got played at Denver Comic Con, unfortunately, but we do have that footage, which you might see eventually sometime. But anyway, so he invited us out for food. We went to Fuddruckers, uh, fantastic burgers. We had a great conversation with him. I posted some pictures from that, and he said, I got something to show you guys. It's a few blocks away. We'll go for a walk. So we went for a walk after we ate, went down, and uh, there was like this industrial comp area. And we got our picture taken in the very same spot that had the original um, original cage with the spikes on the nacelles Enterprise um, model um, before it went into the studio. Uh, There's three guys standing behind it. We were we stood in the exact same position. I photoshopped the exact ship in in front of us in the exact same spot. Johnny's was holding my iPhone, taking the picture, and so that's a fantastic little moment in Star Trek history that we kind of recreated and it's on the Trek Yards page if you haven't seen it go check it out um, but it was fun to be in that same spot uh, the building behind is still is pretty much the same building uh, the building on the side that we were on has all been torn down now and it looks different than in the original photo but it's it's close enough you can tell it's the exact same spot and it was fun being there it was thank you to Johnny was, that was such a special moment for both Sam and myself and plus to go there to have a walk down there with John Eves himself and just chat with him on the way down there it was fantastic um, so that was my, my thing for the 50th uh, for you guys and for myself and Samuel it's kind of a special thing for us as well so that's about it if you haven't seen it um, private message me I can send you the photo or um, just check it out on the Trek Yards page it might be further down in the feed but hopefully people will keep commenting on it and bring it up uh, it's got pictures of us and John at uh, Fuddruckers as well, enjoying our hamburgers and just chatting and ha hanging out. So it was, it was a great time. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand, and I will call that a day. See you guys later. Scott the Foley signing off. Get back to work.